I have got a package with our boards which we have designed uh, in our previous videos so let's unpack this and let's have a look So these are our boards and if you have received your own boards, well done, I'm proud of you. I really mean this because you know many people they don't build the boards from tutorials, so if you did, well done. The very first thing what uh, you may want to do when you receive boards from production is to place some labels on this board because you would like to have a way how to identify every single board and a very simple way how you can do it is just print some labels and uh, stick them on the boards and that's what we are going to do now If you don't have any label maker, you can just use sticky tape and you can write on sticky tape. But uh, label makers are not like very expensive. Some of them are super cheap. I have this uh, printer QL 570, but I think they have also cheaper models. Maybe something like this. So if you like, you can buy something uh, for printing labels. You may find it useful. Also, what is very useful, and especially if you have like more complex boards, then create uh, a spreadsheet, something like this, where each tab is individual board, and then write uh, notes about each board when you find out there is something wrong, something suspicious, or if board works perfectly fine, write everything down into this spreadsheet and then it can help you a lot when you will be working with your boards. Of course, for this specific board, maybe you don't need to create any special spreadsheet because this is like super simple board, but I wanted to mention uh, these spreadsheets in this video because uh, you may find them uh, useful in your future projects. Uh, now we are going to separate uh, this unfitted PCB from the PCB with components. And I don't really know why they fitted this USB connector. Maybe because they forgot to fit them in <laughs> my previous order. Uh, it's funny. I don't know why they fitted it. And theoretically, we should be able to separate this board uh, just by breaking them because there are all these holes. But uh, because this uh, board or these PCBs are, are like super small, it may be quite difficult to break the boards. So what I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to use a saw and I'm going to just you know, separate the boards this way. See how quick I am? <laughs> I'm just kidding. But it was much easier and it looks nice. Uh, just use file and uh, make the board edge look nice. And uh, here it is. This is the board what we have been designing in a couple of uh, videos. So this is the USB connector which we can use to power this board when we will be, for example, uh, debugging this software. This is the place where uh, you can uh, solder wires coming from battery or batteries. 
Uh, I have already fitted this diode. A uh, little bit later, I will show you how you can solder down these uh, small components in case you need some help with soldering. So maybe you will find it useful. Uh, this is the power LED. Here is the LDO. This is a debug connector, which I have not fitted yet. I will fit it a little bit later. Uh, this is the microcontroller. This is the user button, accelerometer, circuit around the RGB LED, and here is the RGB LED. Again, I have already fitted uh, this component. A little bit later, I will show you how you can solder down this LED. Also, I will show you how you can uh, solder a standard true hall LED in case you uh, could not buy this specific LED, which is here. There is uh, nothing really special on the bottom side of our PCB. Uh, there is just some text and these unfitted resistors, uh, which are connected to the USB connector, but uh, we don't have to fit these resistors. So uh, on the bottom side, there is really nothing much to talk about. So, after you receive your boards, what is the first step? Put labels or numbers on your board. And the second step is visual inspection. And that's what we are going to do now. We are going to have a closer look on our board. Wait, wait, wait. I, I really would like to connect my board to power. I would like to know if it works. Let's do it. If you like, go ahead, but in my opinion, that's not the right way how to bring your board to life. From my experience, uh, it's much better be a little bit more patient and um, follow the steps what we are learning now, okay? So uh, before you actually connect your board to power, Maybe you really would like to first have a look uh, if uh, all the components are soldered properly, if there are no short circuits. You know, you, you don't want to damage your board when you connect it to power supply, and if there is something wrong, then you may damage it. For example, what if a chip is soldered the wrong way, or what if there is a short circuit? It really may happen. I have seen it many times. So wait a little bit and uh, first check the board and then we will connect it to power. Now let's go back to our board and uh, let's uh, have a the very close look on uh, every small part of our PCB and on all the components and all the parts and all the connections. Initially just uh, have a generic look on our board. So initially we are going to look, for example, if the rotation of the components is correct, the plus side of this capacitor uh, should be here, so that's okay. Uh, here is another capacitor, this is the plus side, this is correct. Uh, here is the LED and uh, we need to double check if the position of the cathode and anode is okay, this is fine. We also would like to double check if all the components are fitted, all the components what should be fitted, and uh, if you remember, uh, this one was not in stock, so this one was not fitted, it is okay. Uh, here is the uh, microcontroller. We would like to double check the pin 1 position. This is correct. Again, capacitor. This is the accelerometer. Pin 1 position is correct. And uh, this is the circuit around LED. 
the LED is not fitted on this board, uh, that's why I'm not showing it uh, here. I will show you detail of a LED a little bit later. So uh, now what we would like to see, we would like to double check the connection of this accelerometer connection with the PCB because it's quite hard sometimes to solder these kind of components. And uh, in my uh, test boards, they actually uh, they use uh, there was different footprint and there were some problems. This footprint looks much much better. And uh, we are looking if there are no short uh, circuits between the paths. And also see how the thin goes. So how it is, uh, how the pads are soldered. Now I'm just looking how these other components are soldered. Uh, I'm holding the board in my hand uh, and there is no automatic focus, so yeah, it's not easy to, uh, to do this picture or this video under microscope. But I think it's okay. I'm actually very surprised how good this microscope is. Uh, you can see everything uh, seems to be soldered very well. Now we would like to double check if there is no short circuit between uh, the pins of the microcontroller. And also we would like to see uh, the quality of the soldering. Everything seems to be fine. Okay. This is the LDO, no short circuit between the pads. And uh, this USB connector, maybe it could be soldered a little bit better. You can see the thin, it doesn't go like very nicely. Uh, around the pins, um, I'm not uh, sure, but uh, it still seems to be soldered. If there is problem, we can uh, resolder the pins. Perfect. Next, we are going to solder down the missing components and uh, I would like to include this soldering process in this video because, uh, you know, some people who are taking this tutorial, maybe do, they don't have a lot of experience with electronics and maybe they can find uh, some of the tips for soldering useful. And we are going to start with soldering down the diode. My uh, very first tip for soldering is that if you can use leaded solder or leaded tin. That's this uh, red one, what you can see here. I use it sometimes. Uh, however, you only can use it for maybe your hobby projects or you can use it in some countries. But for real products, very often you have to use lead free solder. And uh, Lead free solder behaves a little bit differently comparing to leaded one, and the leaded solder uh, behaves a little bit better. So it's a little bit easier to work with, especially if you are uh, starting with electronics. That's uh, something what maybe you may want to use. 
also what I found useful are uh, these kind of holders which can help you to hold for example your PCB or a virus when you are soldering then uh, take the PCB be sure all the paths are clean put a solder on one of the paths take the component and uh, place it on PCB now notice uh, as I'm melting this solder I'm pushing down the component because this will uh, make it sure that the component is uh, lying uh, perfectly flat on the PCB okay so when you are uh, melting the tin push down the component and uh, if needed then correct the position of the component when only one pin is soldered down it's easy to uh, correct the position once you solder more pins you will not be able or it's not so easy to correct the position so before you start soldering down the rest of the pins be sure the placement of the component is correct now just place uh, the tin on the rest of the pins use some uh, uh, flux and reheat the uh, pins especially if uh, there is a lot of copper be sure you hold down the uh, soldering iron a little bit longer be sure the solder is heated up properly okay only then you will get like very nice and high quality connections it has to be heated up very well once everything is soldered properly clean the PCB and that's it that's how you solder down the components we are going to use exactly same technique to solder down also the SMT LED so what we are going to do first we are going to place some solder on one of the parts and uh, what is next next we are going to place there the component however in this case we need to be extra careful do you know why we need to be sure the pin one location is correct especially if you are starting with hardware design it will happen it will happen everyone that you will solder a component wrong way and then it's a lot of work to desolder the component and, and solder it back so uh, once this will happen to you you will learn very quickly be extra careful when you are soldering always double check where is the pin one location pin one location <laughs> okay so uh, then uh, solder down one of the pins be sure the uh, position is correct also when you will be soldering down this one pin be sure you push down the component be sure the component lies flat on the PCB this is very important and then uh, put solder on the rest of the pins or the rest of the parts once uh, there is solder on every part what we are going to do use some flux and then reheat all the parts this will make you sure that all the connections are perfect clean the PCB and it's done in case you can't get the RGB SMT LED what uh, we have used on our board it is also my case when I was uh, building the boards they didn't have the SMT RGB LED in stock so what I did I bought these uh, true hall RGB LEDs basically with our board uh, you can use almost any kind of uh, true hall RGB LED with common anode 
okay? Uh, once you select uh, LED, you may need to double check the maximum current which can flow through LED and if it's needed, uh, you may need to adjust these resistors. But these resistors, what we have used on our board, they should be fine for like many kind of LEDs. Uh, and uh, once you buy this uh, LED, then you need to solder it down correctly. You can do it based on data sheet or there is also like super simple trick how you can find out what pins of this LED are connected to what colors and that's what we are going to do next. Use your standard DVM, put it into diode measuring mode. Then uh, place the red probe on the longest pin and the uh, black probe on the other pins. And you will see uh, the color which is uh, basically associated with the specific pins. And that's it. That's how simple it is to double check LEDs. Now, once you solder down your RGB LED, it can be very useful if you double check if you soldered the LED correctly. Because, uh, you know, later when we will be uh, doing software and, uh, and something is not working, you may be like, oh, what I'm doing wrong in my software? And then you will find out, oh, actually my software is uh, correct, but I soldered my LED wrong way and that's why it doesn't work. And especially because we can use this super simple way how to double check LED, uh, it's, uh, it's something what I would recommend you, okay? So after you solder down your true hole RGB LED, uh, place your DVM into diode measurement mode and then place the red probe on V pad and the R pad should be the red color, B should be the blue color and G should be the green color. This is very simple way how you can confirm that you soldered your RGB LED correctly to our board. There is uh, one more thing what we need to solder down and it is the debug header. And if you like, you can uh, use uh, vertical or horizontal header. It's not like very difficult to solder it down, but I would like to talk a little bit about this because if you will be following uh, this project, then a little bit later, uh, we uh, will uh, fit the board inside of a tube and uh, for this uh, situation we will need this header to be soldered the special way. So uh, I would like to include in this uh, tutorial also a little bit of uh, video where you can see how this uh, debug header can be soldered in case you will be fully following this project. So here is the uh, video where you can see how I soldered the header. Very similar as uh, what we were doing for SMT components, uh, the very first thing what we would like to solder down is only one of the pins. And uh, that's what we are going to do now. Just solder one of the pins a little bit then double check uh, if uh, the header is aligned uh, correctly and only after you are happy with the position of the header only then solder down all the other pins. Maybe you noticed I'm using a bended header so originally it was like 90 degrees I bended the header a little bit so I get like 45 degree angle and uh, because it's plugged in this weird uh, 45 degree way, uh, the ends are too long, so I'm just cutting them off. 
and because we would like to fit this board inside of a tube we uh, would like to make also these pins a little bit shorter so I'm going to remove this black plastic and I'm going to cut off part of the pin then uh, just try if it's going to make good connection with the debugger and uh, this is how you can solder the header for our project okay this was like enough uh, about soldering and uh, the next step to bring our board to life you know the next step after uh, putting the numbers on our board and uh, visual checking the next step is to measure resistance of the power rails and in our board we have four power rails plus v bat plus 5v usb plus v in and plus 3v3 so what we are going to do in the next step we are going to measure the resistance on these four power rails and it must not be zero ohm zero zero ohms it would mean there is short circuit there is something wrong uh, sometimes when uh, you are measuring the resistance of these power rails on some of the boards the resistance may, may be like very low if there are i don't know processors or memories the resistance may be in ohms 10 ohms 20 50 ohms but it still will be okay only what must not be there is zero ohms okay also be careful how you measure uh, the resistance where you put the plus and minus probe the red one and black probe let's do it uh, let's measure the resistance on the power rails of our board switch on your dvm to measure resistance place the black probe on the ground on your board as you can see i'm using the shield of the usb connector as the ground and we are measuring 10 mega ohms on the power input from the usb connector that's good we are measuring 12 mega ohms on the input from the battery plus v bat we are measuring resistance 13 mega ohms on the output from the diode and uh, we are measuring 7 mega ohms on the output from the LDO this is really really good because none of these measurements is uh, 0 ohms so there is no short circuit on our power rails that's good um, sometimes uh, you may see these numbers uh, like floating when you will be measuring this resistance it is okay and it's because for example there are these capacitors which will be charging or discharging so floating numbers are okay uh, there just uh, must not be zero ohm resistance also uh, uh, if you swap the probes if you place for example the red probe on the ground and the black one uh, you will use to measure the resistance you may get different numbers and maybe you don't want to measure this way because uh, sometimes in your circuits uh, there may be for example protection diodes or some other uh, circuits which may influence these measurements okay so when you will be measuring resistance on your board resistance of the power rails on your boards uh, use the black probe black probe on the ground and there must not be zero ohm resistance on any of your power rails because that would mean you have short circuit on your board in our case uh, all the power rails they have several mega ohms resistance so perfect and now we are ready to plug in our board to power let's do it very simple way how we can measure current which will go inside of our board is to use this kind of device uh, you can buy it on ebay or you can buy it on amazon just uh, look for a usb tester or something like that 
it's a device uh, which you can uh, plug in between a USB power source and your USB cable and it will show a number of different uh, results uh, for example these two numbers are the numbers what we would like to see in the voltage and the current but it will also show you uh, like I don't know uh, power or how many watts uh, this is consuming what kind of uh, charging is happening if it's Samsung, Apple or you know all the kind of different information you can find there but these two numbers are important for us now uh, as you can see uh, our board has not been connected yet and uh, the current what you can see here is like 100 uh, microamps so I'm not really sure about accuracy of these devices I don't think they are very accurate but for what we need it's good enough and what we are going to do next we are going to connect the USB cable to our board what I would like to say uh, actually if uh, you are connecting your board for the very first time to power there are few things what you may need to be careful about so first be sure you connected it correctly okay double check the plus and ground uh, also uh, what you would like to do you would like to use a uh, current limiting power supply in our case we are using a uh, USB so um, this uh, hub what I'm using it will deliver maximum like half arm so I'm not really worried about maximum current but uh, don't use power supply which can deliver I don't know five amps and then if there is something wrong on your board it can just blow up it has happened to me so it can be pretty dangerous when you are connecting your very first board uh, very first time to power and that's also a reason what maybe you would like to sometimes do you may want to cover your board with something like plexiglass or something uh, definitely do not uh, like do not look it on your board when you will be powering up your board for the very first time I've seen a board which uh, blow up because there was capacitor uh, fitted wrong way and it actually made fire on my table and if I would be watching or if I would be looking on this board I don't know what could happen okay so be very careful sometimes you may want to cover your board when you are connecting them very first time to power but this is like super low power board there should be nothing super dangerous about this so we can connect it to power and let's see what will happen you can see the uh, power LED is on and you can see now we have a little bit higher current so it's uh, like 400 microamps and uh, that's good that's really really good because uh, if you see that uh, your current uh, your board uh, current consumption is very high maybe there is something wrong on your board if you see that current on your board is increasing there may be something wrong on your board okay switch off the uh, power supply immediately if you see something like that also what I'm going to do next I'm going to try uh, the temperature of the components I'm not really expecting uh, anything to get hot because this current is like super low but uh, this is what you would like to do okay uh, if you don't have thermal camera you can use your finger just touch all the chips and all the resistors or maybe also beads all the components on your board uh, be sure nothing is getting uh, very hot if yes there may be something wrong and notice uh, when I touch this uh, part of our board the RGB LED is on do you know why? because we have not uh, uploaded any firmware yet so it means some of the signals on our board they are floating and when I touch 
these signals with my finger, I can influence them. And that's why I switch on this RGB LED. And you can see the current is now a little bit higher when this RGB LED is on. Oh, you can see it. You can see it now. Okay, uh, everything seems to be fine, no high current. So uh, in the next step, what we would like to do, we would like to measure the voltages on the power rails. I'm going to switch on DVM and uh, I'm going to place the black probe on the ground and we are going to measure the voltage on the input. So basically this is the voltage coming through USB 4.596. Notice it's not 5 volts. There is some tolerance what uh, you can have on the USB voltage. And also uh, I think this USB hub what I'm using is not like very strong and you could see on the small device which I was using the USB hub is not really delivering 5 volts. So uh, this is what we have on the input 4.596. It is okay. Now uh, we are going to measure the voltage behind the diode. And uh, again, notice we lost some voltage across this diode. Suddenly it is only 4.398 volt. Still, this is okay. Uh, this is the voltage what is going to be used to power up our LED, RGB LED. And what uh, we really would like to see is the output on our LDO regulator. Do you know how much we should have on the output of the LDO regulator? 3.3 volts. So let's measure it. And it's... 3.303 yes yes it works all the uh, power rails on our board are working perfectly fine okay these were the steps what you may want to use or what you may want to follow when you receive your boards from production and this is the setup what I have been using today. <laughs> By the way, actually there is one more step what I very often uh, use. Uh, when I receive boards from production, I also always uh, measure the oscillators or uh, crystals on the board because uh, it has happened to me and I've seen like number of people uh, spending or wasting days uh, trying to make uh, work a board which had faulty crystal uh, board where crystal was not oscillating or it was oscillating on wrong frequency because the crystal was damaged or it was badly soldered okay so especially if you have very first prototype always also measure the oscillators and crystals what do you think about this my setup? Let me know in the comments. Here is my camera which was uh, uh, set up uh, for my table. This is the microscope. This is, uh, here is my uh, camera, what you can see right now. A lot of mess. <laughs> Last time, I really thought we could do also some firmware or software development today, but let's do it next time. And I'm going to give you an idea of what we are going to program. So uh, next time we will learn how to make some simple software, how to load it into our microcontroller. And this is what we may get. So uh, basically, uh, based on the position of the board, we are going to use R, G or B LED. You can see now it's the red light, this is the blue one 
and uh, this is the green one so this is what uh, we are going to learn how to read the information from the accelerometer and then how to show it on the LED and uh, that's it that's everything for today's video I really hope you enjoy it uh, I also hope maybe you learn something new I uh, I had fun time uh, it was it was one of the most complex videos what I have ever created but I really enjoyed creating this video because I could buy a new microscope yes 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 <laughs> um, leave comments uh, let me know if you are following this tutorial if you are designing this board or if you are designing uh, your own board based on this tutorial uh, leave in the comments uh, if you if you send your PCB uh, into production yeah or if you really if you build board based on this tutorial I really would like to know if I'm creating this tutorial only for myself or if there are really people who are like really watching and following this tutorial it would help me a lot to know uh, you know that it makes sense to make this tutorial I would like to thank you very much for watching and uh, see you in the next video. Bye!